So what should the change? So in the previous sections, we assumed that the overall heat transfer coefficient u is constant throughout the heat exchanger, and that the convection heat transfer coefficients can be predicted using the convection correlations. However, it should be kept in mind that the uncertainty in the predicted value of u can exceed 30%. Thus, it's natural to tend to over-design the heat exchangers in order to avoid unpleasant surprises. Also, some thought should be given to the, which fluid should pass through the tube side and which fluid through the shell side. Usually, the more viscous, viscous fluid is more suitable for the shell side and the fluid with the higher pressure for the tube side. The section of heat exchangers involves numerous things to think about. Probably the most important thing is the heat, what's known as the heat transfer rate. The heat exchanger should be capable of transferring heat at the specified rate in order to achieve the desired temperature change of the fluid at the specified mass flow rate. Second, second important thing is obviously the overall cost of the heat exchanger. It has to be affordable. Related to the cost is what's known as the pumping power. As you can calculate the operating cost of the heat exchanger by multiplying the pumping power times the hours of operation times the unit cost of electricity in dollars per kilowatt hour. Another parameter is size and weight. Normally, the smaller and lighter heat exchanger are best. Another parameter is the type of heat exchanger to be selected depends primarily on the types of fluids involved, the site and weight restrictions, and the presence of any phase change processes. Another parameter to consider is the materials you're going to make it, the heat exchanger out of. And there's several more considerations as well. It's, for example, ease of servicing. You want low maintenance costs. You want it to be quiet. Safety and reliability. All of these things can become very important in the selection process. So let's take a look at, a, at an example, example 1112. Installing heat exchanger to save energy and money. So in this example, we have a dairy plant where milk is pasteurized by hot water supplied by a natural gas furnace. The hot water is then discharged in open floor drain at 80 degrees C at a rate of 15 kilograms per minute. The plant operates 24 hours a day and 365 days a year. The furnace has an efficiency of 80% and the cost of natural gas is $1.10 per therm. The average temperature of the cold water entering the furnace throughout the year is 15 degrees C. The drained hot water cannot be returned to the furnace and recirculated because it contains contaminate, contamination, is contaminated during this process. To save energy, it's proposed that a water-to-water -water heat exchanger be installed to preheat the incoming water and the drained hot water. Assuming that the heat exchanger will recover 75% of the available heat in the hot water, Determine the heat transfer rating of the heat exchanger that is, needs to be purchased and suggest a suitable type. Also determine the amount of money this heat exchanger will save the company per year by reducing its consumption of natural gas. So here's a diagram the book provides of the proposed heat exchanger. We have the hot water coming in at 80 degrees C and then exiting. We have the cold water coming in at 15 degrees C looping around and then exiting. The heat recovery from the hot water will be maximum when it leaves the heat exchanger at the inlet temperature of the cold water. So Q dot max is MH dot CP THN minus TCN. So we're given the flow rate. CP, we can look that value up and the temperatures we know so we can calculate the uh, heat flow rate at 67.9 kilojoules per second. So that's the existing hot water stream has to provide this potential to heat a rate of 67.9 kilograms per second to the incoming cold water. This value will be approached in a, in a counterflow heat exchange with a very large heat transfer surface area. Heat exchange of reasonable size and cost can capture 75% of this heat transfer potential. 
thus the heat transfer rating of the prospective heat exchanger would be 75% of that or 50.9 kilojoules per second. Since this heat exchange will operate 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, the annual operating costs are, can be calculated as follows. 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, so that's 8,760 hours per year. Noting that this heat exchanger saves 50.9 kilojoules energy per second, the energy saved per year, we can find this by multiplying uh, the cost times the number of hours per year. Uh, so we got 1.605 times 10 to the ninth kilojoules per year. And here we have to use the conversion factors for seconds to hours. The furnace is said to be 80% efficient. So for each 80 units of heat supplied by the furnace, natural gas and energy content of 100 units must be supplied to the furnace. Therefore, this energy savings determined from the results above and fuel savings amounts to the, as follows. We can calculate that. The fuel saved is the energy saved divided by the furnace efficiency. So it comes out to be 19,020 therms per year. That's the fuel saved. Noting that the price of natural gas is $1.10 per therm, the amount of money saved becomes $20,920 per year. Therefore, the installation of the proposed heat exchanger will save the company $20,920 a year. And the installation cost of the heat exchanger will probably be paid from the fuel savings in a sh short amount of time.